Hey guys, today we're going to learn about the surface area and volume of prisms. Alright, first of all, let's think about a shape. For example, a square. Now, this would be a 2D object. A 3D object, on the other hand, would have another dimension to it. Think of a cube. Now we're going to use this 3D object, this cube, to learn about what surface area means. A surface area measures how much material is required to cover or construct a three-dimensional object. If you imagine for a second that this cube is folded up and that each side is actually paper, then you can unravel this to see the flat 2D paper that would have been needed to create this cube. The area of all of this put together is the surface area. So let's just fold that back up into the form of a cube. All right, so again, the surface area of the cube would be the area of all of the sides put together. It's pretty easy, right? Great, now let's move on to the idea of volume. Volume measures how much space a 3D object might hold. Just imagine that you fill up this cube with water. The amount of water this cube can hold would be limited to the volume of this cube. Think of it like the maximum amount of space on the inside of the 3D object. All right, so let's explore the surface area and volume of prisms. Here are two common types of prisms, a triangular prism and a rectangular prism. Notice how the prism starts with a shape and ends with the same shape. Also, notice how if you made a cut at any point of the prism, the inside shape here would be the same as the shape on either ends of the prism. This is one of the key characteristics of a prism. So this, for example, would not be a prism. And why? Because if you cut right here, the middle would be similar in shape, but would be different in size than the two end points, thus not satisfying the characteristics of a prism. Okay, so let's first deal with learning how to get the surface area of a triangular prism. Let us identify each part of this triangular prism so we can then refer back to them. These two sides of the prism are called bases. And the sides that are not bases are called lateral faces. So the formula for this is the following. 2 times the area of the base plus, open bracket, perimeter of base times height of lateral face, closing bracket. So these are the dimension for this triangular prism. We can find the area of this triangular base by using the formula for area of a triangle, which was base times height divided by two. So we plug in the info to get 12 times eight divided by two, which equals 48 inches squared. So the area of the base is 48 inches squared. But don't forget that we've got two of these bases on the ends of this triangular prism. Thus, we would multiply the area of 48 inches squared by 2. So far, we're at 96 inches squared. Now, what's the perimeter of this triangular base? Well, conveniently enough, we've got the side lengths of the triangular base given right to us. It's 10 plus 10 plus 12, which equals 32 inches. All we need to do now is to multiply this to the height of the lateral face. Notice how I said the height of the lateral face and not the height of the triangular base. The height of the triangle, or shall I say the base, was used to find the area of the two triangles that cover both ends of the prism. But the area of the rest of the sides will be determined by the perimeter of the triangular base multiplied by the height of the lateral face itself. So we've got 32 inches for the entire perimeter of the base, and we multiply that to 20. And we get 640 inches squared, 
So in total, we've got 96 inches squared plus 640 inches squared, which gives us 736 inches squared for the area of this triangular prism. Great, now let's find the surface area of a rectangular prism. This should be fairly easy now that we've got experience with the triangular prism already. So again, here's our formula for finding the surface area of a prism. 2 times the area of the base plus open bracket perimeter of base multiplied by height of lateral face closing bracket. To find the area of the base, we simply do length times width for the rectangular base. So we do 3 times 5, which equals 15 centimeters squared. And since we've got two of these areas on the prism, we multiply by 2, giving us 30 centimeters squared so far. Good. What's the perimeter of the space shape? Well, the opposite sides are the same in length, which means it's 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5, making it 16 centimeters. Since the height of the lateral face here is 6, we do 16 times 6, giving us 96. Finally, we do 30 plus 96 to get 126 centimeters squared as the total surface area of this rectangular prism. Awesome. Now let's take a look at how to find the volume of a prism. Remember that when we are looking for the volume, we're looking for the amount that can actually fit in to the 3D object. The formula for getting the volume of a prism is the following. Area of the base multiplied by height of the prism. For a triangular prism, looking at the one that we are dealing with in the beginning of this video, the area of the base is 48 inches squared. The height of the prism is 20 inches. So if we apply this to our formula for finding the volume of a prism, we would do 48 inches multiplied by 20 inches, giving us 960 inches cubed. And notice how we denote it as cubed to represent the volume, whereas the area or surface area of something is denoted by writing it as squared. To finish off our lesson, we'll look at how to find the volume of a rectangular prism that we saw earlier on. And again, remember that we got the surface area of this prism before. And now we're looking at the volume. These are two completely different things. So again, the formula for volume of a prism is area of base times height of prism. The area of the base for this prism is simply 3 centimeters times 5 centimeters, which is 15 centimeters squared. The height of this prism is 6 centimeters. So all we need to do is multiply 15 by 6, making the volume equal to 90 centimeters cubed. It's pretty easy, right? Well then, I implore you to try some questions so that you can commit this to your memory right away. That's it for this lesson guys, and I encourage you to take a look at how to find the surface area and volume of pyramids for your next lesson.